Anand baran lair dur Nur dir dir di geroak mulai Nur dir 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 Nur dir tau ta Nur dir tau ta Dir yel rimba yel bamba Bidne van yel de valun de valun si mosis Tulan ni nyan bardao Kos yen kanan utirima Roha ben roha siare dao Roha ben roha lapak Bidne van yel roha Bidne van yel rimba valun de valun si mosis Once upon a beautiful summer night, the men were watching their horses in the meadow. And as they watched, they fell asleep. Among the fairies, there was one quite young and tiny, called Kosienka, who had come down to earth from the clouds for the first time that night. Kosienka thought it would be lovely to rise like a whirlwind, and it so happened that she had got hold of the most spirited horse of all, a black, small, but fierce as fire. And he flew away like the wind with Kosienka into the wide, wide world. The black carried Kosienka far and far away till at last they came to a great plain with a cold wind blowing over it. The black galloped into the plain and there was nothing there. Neither trees, no grass. It was cold as cold. And nothing did she see but only great crumbling walls. And nothing did she hear but now and again a stone cracking with a cold. The black ran on with Kosienka for seven days and seven nights. The seventh day, just before sunrise, they found the ruinous walls of the terribly great city of Legen.
Regoch was a huge man. Bigger than the biggest oak in the biggest forest. Bigger than the biggest rock on the biggest mountain. He lived alone between the ruinous walls of this terribly great, terribly cold place. And all he did was to count the stones of Legan. It had never occurred to Regoch to want a finer home for himself. Nor had he ever thought that there might be better work than his in the world. He had never asked for anything better. But Kosienka, however, gave him no peace, and she wanted him to come out and see the world with her. Regoch started to walk, and had already taken a ten yard stride when Kosienka stopped him and begged. Couldn't we go under the ground, perhaps, Regoch, dear? So that I might see what there is under the earth. Kosienka wanted to know everything about everything. And so they agreed to travel underground until they should arrive under the forest by the golden fields and there they would come up. When they had settled that, Regoch began to break up the earth. He lifted up his great feet and stamped. The whole of the great city of Legan shook and a great many walls tumbled down. they went on, it grew darker and darker, black darkness, darkness. such as there is nowhere save in the bowels of the earth. Soon they were in the middle of all the marvels which had been swallowed by the earth in days of old. But Kosienka was frightened by the great darkness. She took out a tiny seed pearl from a little bag that her mother had given to her. Kosienka began to play with the treasures. She looked at the beautiful things and rummaged among them. And as for Regoc, he sat down to rest.
this beauty trembled, swayed and crashed down, closing and blocking up the path between Regoc and Kosienka. She wept and cried and tried to get to Regoc. But she found that there was no way through and that her plight was hopeless. They could neither see nor hear one another, nor could they reach one another. And the bag of pearls, which might have helped her, was buried underneath. There was the poor little fairy Kosienka, buried alive in that vast grave, and perhaps would never again see those golden fields for which she had set out, and all because she would not go straight on by the way they had intended, but would loiter and turn aside to the right and to the left to pry into God's secrets. But all these treasures had been swallowed up by God's will, and it is God's secret why so much treasure should lie there undisturbed. And Regoc. Regoc was really an old stupid. When all crashed down and there was the big landslide between him and Kosienka, he never moved, but sat still in the dark. But all the time there was something worrying him. He wondered what in the world it could be. He wondered. And as he wandered, he shook his head and he turned like the wind and ran to find Kosienka. Pure joy. Regoc's tears were as big as peers and Kosienka's as tiny as a little seed. But except for size, they were both the same sort. And from that moment, these two were mightily fond of one another. When they had finished their cry, Kosienka found her pearls and then they went on, but they touched no more of the things they saw on the ground, neither the sunken ships with their hordes of treasure, which had worked their way down from the bottom of the sea, nor the red coral, nor the yellow amber which twained round the underground pillars. They touched nothing. And soon they were under the forest, just underneath a glen between the two villages. No one ever came to this glen but the herd boys and girls from both villages. And so it was on the day when Regoc broke through the earth at that very spot.
Kosienka was full of joy because she had found companions who liked the same things as she did. And she brought out her little bag of pearls to give presents and pleasure to her new friends. She threw down a pearl and she threw down a second pearl and yet another pearl did Kosienka throw out and The children shouted for joy and Kosinka threw out all the pearls one after another, never thinking that she ought to save them. Though heaven alone knew how badly they would need them soon, because these two villages were at enmity with one another. And that is why Yilo, who was the handsomest and cleverest among the lads of both villages, had not joined in their games. Rather sad and worried, he stayed near Regoc, because he knew that a terrible thing is going to happen today. Now, there was bitter strife between the two villages, strife over the threshing floors and the pastures, and the mills, and the timber felling, and most of all, over the staff of headmanship, which one of the villages had long claimed as belonging to it by rights, and the other would not give up. Let us pierce the dike along the river's Lavoda. The river will widen the hole, the dike will fall, and the water will flood the enemy village. <laughs> it will drown men and women, flood the graveyard and the fields till the water will be level above them to show where the enemy village has been. <laughs> but our fields are higher and our village lies on a height and so no harm will come to us. And then they really went out with a great ram to pierce the dike secretly and dead of night. But Lilo, he knew that their fields are not so high and he knew that the water will overflow them too. And before the night is over, there will be a lake where their two villages used to be. wonderful thing of all. The river's Lavoda stood as though you had rolled a wall into the breach. It stood and could not rise above Regot's shoulders. But just as the sun rose, far and wide, there was not a soul alive. Only helpless young children in the midst of the ravaged plain. Who will take care of them now? Who will show them how to till the ground? How to build the houses? How to live now that not one of their parents was left alive? Suddenly, they all looked towards the village, and there, at one of the windows, 
They were great grandfather and great grandmother who had been the only sensible people in the two villages and had saved themselves by taking refuge in the attic. And the best of all was that in the heart of the village stood a beautiful tower. There lived Kosienka, the lovely fairy, and looked down upon the land that had been so dear to her from the moment when she first came to earth. an evening when the field work was done. Yilo would lead the herd boys and girls to the tower and they would sing songs and dance in the garden with Kostinka, always lovely, gentle and joyous. Regoch was getting horribly homesick for his desolate city of Legan. That night, he had swallowed mud enough to last him a thousand years and seen more than enough of trouble. And so, he was just dying to be back in his vast, empty city where he had counted the stones in peace for so many hundred years. So, he went on to Legan, where he is sitting to this very day, counting the stones and praying the Lord never again to tempt him away from his home.